What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. Today, let's talk about police surplus. Pistols, magazines, ammunition, all kinds of stuff. You're not a cop. Why do you have handcuffs? What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. So let's talk about police surplus, minus the handcuffs. I don't know why anybody needs handcuffs, but as far as pistols, magazines, ammunition, stuff like that, you can get some really great deals on police surplus. But the question is, is is it any good? Now, I will admit that I'm a little bit of a police surplus addict. I like shopping for deals. I'm kind of a cheapie sometimes. I do have some nicer stuff. I will shell out cash every now and then. But when you can save a buck on something quality, something you know that works, I mean, if you can save any amount of money, it's good. When you can save a lot of money, it's even better. Now, I just want to clear it up right now. I'm not shilling for any company. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm just explaining something that's going on in the firearms industry. We have a very noisy bird that's opinionated over there. I don't know his actual stance on police surplus, but I'm telling you, you can get some great deals right now. You've always been able to get them, really. But right now, there's a good transition of police agencies, whether they're federal or local, state, whatever. But they transition these handguns a lot. And right now, a lot of them seem to be doing it because I, primarily, I think it's because they're going to guns with carry optics. So things like what I have in front of me are three versions of the Smith & Wesson. Actually, I have four in the box with one in the box. The Smith & Wesson 1.0. Now, a lot of people would think that that's outdated because they have the 2.0. But there's really not much of a difference between the two. The biggest difference would be the grip texture, in my opinion. A little bit of slide serration is different, possibly. And the trigger could be a little bit different. Other than that, you have the beaver tail is a little bit more extended on the 1.0. And that's about it. They're interchangeable with magazines. They feel very much the same. Like I said, the 1.0s just have a less aggressive grip. Now, for a person like me, the way I carry them, I love the less aggressive grip. I'm a 1911 person. I like high beaver tails. That doesn't bother me whatsoever. I love 19 or I love 1911. So therefore, I get along with the Smith and Wessons very well. Now, the same thing will apply to Glock. Not the whole 1911 type of grip angle, but Glocks also produce a lot of these police surplus trade-ins right now because they're all going, many of them are going from 40 Smith & Wesson, they're going to 9mm. So you're seeing so many Glock 40 calibers, particularly Glock 22s, you're seeing them on the market, they're practically flooding the market. Also, a lot of agencies are finally getting into the Gen 4s. They have been in the Gen 4s, and now they're definitely getting into the Gen 5s of the Glock 17s. So you're seeing Glock 17 Gen 2 and Gen 3s. You're seeing those at absolute rock bottom prices. Now, some of those Gen 2s, they've got some chipped magwells and things like this. The Smith & Wesson seem to be in better condition than some of the older Glocks. But the Gen 2 or the Gen 3, Gen 4, and if you happen to have Gen 5s that are already on trade-in, they're completely worth it. And the price is not that out of control. There's also a lot of SIGs out there in trade-in status, but I have no experience with those. I have minimal experience with Glocks, so I'm gonna stick with the Smith & Wesson as far as the examples I have today. Now you can find most of these guns in most of the calibers eventually. The nine, the 40, and the 45 are the most prevalent. Every now and then you will see 357 SIG roll through. A lot of them though will be 40 caliber. Being 40 caliber, remember that a lot of those are convertible to 357 SIG if you choose. And these things are coming in cheap, real cheap. 250 bones is not unheard of for the M&Ps traded in 1.0 or 2.0. Sometimes the 2.0s, they carry a little bit more money, but still not much more, like 275, 300 max. And some of these guns are in super condition. I have one in here that is brand new in the box. Not only pistols, but magazines, police surplus magazines. We're talking, these are 40 caliber or 357 SIG. They're interchangeable. Those go for $13 right now when I was picking these up. $13, that's incredible. And they're in good condition, completely serviceable, clean, not full of grit. You can tell they haven't been thrown around or even carried very much at all. And on top of that, this sounds totally wacky, but police trade in ammo. When I got this, this was about pure unobtainium. This is 357 SIG Gold Dot Police Trade-In Ammo. The only reason that they trade in ammo, from what I understand, is because according to some agencies, there is an expiration date to the ammo, or at least a limit of how long they will hold on 
to a batch of it. I've heard that it can be as short as five years. I've heard it's more of an average of 10 years. But yes, they actually trade this back in with the ammo companies or off it somehow, and it gets back on the market for anybody else that wants it. These are the law enforcement packs of Gold Dot. These were on sale for 24 beans. That's unheard of. Any other version, even Full Metal Jacket at the time of 357 SIG was going for $60 a box. And you were able to pick this up for 24 beans and you could get the SIG, lawm the Spear Lawman in 357 SIG, the Full Metal Jacket or the Frangible for under $20. That's crazy. And they're brand new. These things just came out of the case. There's not a dent on the box. It's totally serviceable, good ammunition. Let's just go over these four guns real quick so you have an idea of what might come your way if you choose to go the trade-in route. The first one I'm going to show you is a really cool one. This is a 357 SIG, and it is a police trade-in. This was the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office pistol at one time. There's their shield on the top of it. I think that's awesome. Not, not only is it a good pistol in a cool cartridge that's actually kind of collectible now because Smith & Wesson does not make 357 SIG as an actual chambering anymore, but it also has the police badge right there on it, the sheriff's badge. I just think that's really cool. It's a really good quality pistol. There's not many marks or blemishes on it. You can see that it's been carried, but actually most of that carry mark has been from me carrying it. This is part of my normal carry rotation. I love this gun. It's never given me a problem. Smith & Wesson M&Ps never give me a problem in general. They're ultra reliable. I have the stock trigger in there. It does have the three dot night sights. Most of these police trade-ins are gonna come with three dot night sights. And truthfully, most of them are gonna be extinct or depleted. I guess that's a better word than extinct. But yeah, the tritium inside is gonna be depleted, but that's okay because they just act as a three dot sight after that. They're just fine. Some of them have a little bit of a glow to them. I've actually got a couple, though, that have had a high glow to them still. 15 rounds of 357 SIG loaded with some police trade-in gold dots. That's no joke, and it's very affordable. So I don't know why anybody would want to be buying high points when you can buy something like this for another $100. Now, maybe you're not going to get the specific 357 SIG version, but the 40 calibers, they are plentiful. Here's another one that has night sights on it. It's been pretty gently used. I've carried this one before. I like this one a lot. This is just like any other M&P. They're just completely functional, awesome pistols. The magazine on this one's a little bit more beat up than the rest, but that's part of the used stock of magazines. You see a little bit of wear here and there. Like that's the most wear on this pistol is right there on some of the controls. The sights are not that beat up. The controls there have a little bit of wear, but minimal holster wear here. Just overall very clean. I don't think they ever hung any weapons lights over them. This one does not have a badge or any sort of a symbol on it. You can usually tell how much they've been fired by how much wear is on their barrel, their chamber. This one's not too bad. You get a little bit of a holster wear right there, but I would say overall very acceptable condition for that type of money. Here's another one chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson with the exact same thing, just minor wear on the controls. On the other side, same thing. Not very beat up at all. I've put a lot of rounds through it, but these things, they hold their quality as long as you don't do stupid things with them. Yes, it has an Olight on it. That's the one Olight that I have that actually works for a pistol, and it was free. That's why I have it. Definitely not chilling Olights. This one is a semi-bed stand gun. Yeah, the light actually works. But yeah, this is a semi-bed stand gun, and that's one of the things I'm talking about with these pistols. This one does have a strong night sight on it. And it's just, I mean, for the money, you can kind of put these pistols wherever you want. A lot of people like the idea of having a pistol in arm's reach in case of home invasion. And this is actually a very cheap way to do it. Now, the next one I'm going to show you is a very cool example because this one came to me absolutely new, like new in box. This gun has never been carried. I can guarantee you that. I don't think it was ever fired except for at the factory. The magazine itself shows no signs of being even loaded because sometimes that little white mark will get stripped away, and if they get inserted too many times, you'll see striping on them. But I try to be gentle with this one. This one's just one I keep around as an extra. This one's really never been used. you got to smack the magazine back into it. You can see it did have some firing, maybe from the factory there. The sights are medium intensity on this one, but this gun is clean, totally clean. Two other brand new magazines. I mean, how do you beat that? It's got the original fired case in the box, the chamber flag. This one was set in the corner and it was never used. I can, and that happens a lot of times. I can tell you that happens more times than you think. 
is that the agencies buy a few extra pistols and they have them laying around. This one doesn't have the name of anybody on the bottom of it anywhere, but but this one here does. This is another cool thing is sometimes the officers that carried them or whatever, this guy here was a parole and probation officer. <laughs> one of the reasons they were lightly used. His name is up top there. I'm not going to show it, but it's pretty cool. If you wanted to go ahead and track down what department these gun, guns come from, you actually can sometimes. Sometimes they're obvious in their marks. Sometimes they're not. And you got to figure out the serial numbers a little bit. This one's obviously, like I said, from Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. We figured that one out. I have another one from Detroit PD. I thought that was pretty cool. One thing that I will point out is that depending on where they came from, like this one, I'm not sure where this one came from. I think it's Minneapolis or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but they might have different requirements. So when you're purchasing these, you might have a slight gamble, or if you're at the store, you can at least check it out. But online purchases, sometimes you're taking a gamble. They could have, hopefully they would tell you this in the description when you're looking it up, some of them might have a trigger requirement like a New York 10 pound trigger. I have seen M&P 45s with 10 pound triggers and they are horrendous. You would never want to try to use one. I don't know why you would need a 10 pound or want a 10 pound trigger unless you were restricted to it. Another thing is this one in particular, this one is not, it, you'll notice these guns usually have a marking on the side. I'll put this one up next to it. It says caution, capable of firing with magazine removed. This one does not say this. Wherever this one came from, they had a requirement. I called Smith & Wesson. I'm too bad I have a bad memory and I can't remember where they said it came from. But they told me that that department had a requirement or whatever municipality. When this happens, it's because there's a requirement that when the magazine is removed, they do not want the gun to be able to fire. So this one in particular, let me go ahead and clear it. So we're clear, we're good, we're empty. There's no magazine that gun will not fire. Now, if I put an empty magazine in it, there you go. You heard the striker go down. So something to kind of check out. Always look for that marking on the side of these. Just for fun, let's put some shots down range. I have 15 rounds loaded up of just some 180 grain green monsters. This gun is super lubricated and clean right now. I'm going to go ahead and see how worn out that slide release is by slamming the magazine in. See if it inertial chambers. Yes, it does. That is something you will have with some of these guns that were used more than others. There we go, it ran them all, and I did not shoot fast because I wanted to show you, as we're gonna walk up here, the accuracy of these pistols are just fine. You might have to adjust the sights a little bit because some individual officer might have changed them, so always check them to see if they're centered, and then you can adjust them for yourself if needed, but plenty of accuracy right there. We were at about 20 feet, we're not super far away, but defensive handguns, we're not talking about a gun that has of optic on it, we're dealing with iron sights. But keep in mind, at the price of these pistols, you can easily have them milled for an optic if you'd like to, and then you can do direct mount, as opposed to a lot of them that are coming out now with optics plates set up that don't seem to be too optimal because sometimes those plate setups, they shear off their bolts and off comes the optic. The direct mount that you can get by having one milled might be a better option. Let's give a 357 SIG from the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office a try. Yes, that one loaded itself too. The 1.0s are known to self-load pretty much all the time. The 2.0s are a little bit better. I'll go ahead and shoot a little bit faster now, but... There we go, there were 15. Pretty good placement, we'll take a look. I had one go a little bit high up there for a jugular shot, but the rest of these, they would definitely be removing anything needed to support standing and breathing and all the other stuff. So I would say pretty good deal. So do I think police trade-ins are worth it? Absolutely, 100%. And keep in mind, you can also find shotguns and rifles. I would probably be careful with some of the rifles because a lot of them appear to be customized. They might have switched around bolt carrier groups, charging handles, grips, stocks, things like that. But shotguns seem to be remaining pretty 
classic 870 police shotguns, things like that, Mossberg 500. And then you get you got to watch out for, or it could be an advantage of the shorter barrels. So it's going to be an NFA item because some of these things are 14 inch shotguns, but a lot of them are still 18 inches and you can have those no problem. That's all I've got for you on this subject. I'm not telling you to go spend a bunch of money and get yourself in trouble with your significant other and not pay your bills. But man, sometimes when certain deals come around, especially when you know that we might get into a pinch every now and then with the availability of these things, you, I, I don't like to say buy them cheap and stack them deep. But with something like this, if you know you might want them around, then why not get them when they are super cheap, available, and of pretty decent quality? Stuff like the ammo, you can't pass that up. Things like the magazine going for 13 beans instead of 34 or 40 beans, can't pass that up. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something from it. Hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you know somebody else that might benefit from this video, somebody that's been wondering about these, go ahead and share it. If you're not subscribed to The Turkey's Opinion, why not? You should be. And for those of you that are subscribed, check your notification bell because you know sometimes funny things happen. Thanks for watching this video, and until we see you next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep shooting. Maybe some of your police trade-ins?